production on the mass scale plant and uh, the southeast robots, for example, trace robot to hospitals. Yeah, hospitals. right, right. So right, right now, we can make at most like a couple dozen each month of robots maybe in our current facility in Hong Kong. But now that the border from Hong Kong to China is opening up again, now we're talking to factories in China about scaling up production. So that's, uh, that's more on the side of Hanson Robotics, the company that makes the robots. But yeah, they, they basically need to instrument a factory just for, for making robots at, at larger scale. It could be that factory ends up here in Saudi also, we'll see. I think that they would like to have more of a high-tech manufacturing yeah. infrastructure here. Yes, how do you wish it probably? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, of course, some, some pieces would still be made in China, Korea, or, 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 or whatnot, but there's no reason you couldn't assemble and test the robots here. I mean, I'm, I'm also working with a company called Simula and making new chips for AGI and new boards for AGI. And similarly, the chip itself was probably made in, in Taiwan, like most advanced chips. But the, the assembly of a new board for AGI with multiple chips wired together could be done in Saudi Arabia or re really anywhere else with a, with a reasonable infrastructure. So that, that will be the future as I see it in a couple years. So the robots have our own Simuli AGI chips on board and on, on these these AGI boards you know they're running the hypercycle ledgerless blockchain maybe the the new net processor sharing infrastructure and singularity net platform and then we have a system called OpenCog Hyperon which is a new general intelligence architecture that I've been spending a lot of time on for the last year which is sort of a embodies reasoning, learning, language understanding, perceptions, modeling of self and other and so forth. And all this cognitive AGI code that's live on top of this whole other stack, right? So the, I mean, the complexity of what we're doing is we're trying to build a whole new tech stack for AI with decentralization at the underpinning, right? So I mean, you need, you need an AI-focused blockchain, you need singularity net, which is a sort of an inter communication in the communication platform you need NuNet which allows you to share processing you have the Hanson robots which are a physical vehicle you have the Sophiaverse which is our own our own metaverse with with, with robot with robots in it you have OpenCog which is our open source AI tool but you've got to build all these things they all have to operate together and then this this really lets you out compete the tech stacks of Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and so forth. But you, but you can see the challenge because these are trillion-dollar companies that that, so that that we're up against, right? Do you right? see the match with uh, Microsoft or Google? Oh, I know. I mean, you know, I live in an island in the Puget Sound off the coast of Seattle. So we've got Seattle, city of four million people. We have Amazon, Microsoft, and, and Boeing there. Right? So there, there's a lot of a lot of big tech, but the good news is all these big tech companies are laying people off now. So now, now we can we can Starbucks suck all those people into the open source and decentralized ecosystem instead, right? So, so I mean, I think in some ways the era of big tech, you're seeing chinks in the armor, right? Like people are like, well, hold on, Chat GPT may destroy Google's monopoly on search. Now Google can make their own Chat GPT-like thing. But you're going to see half a dozen open source chat GPT like things coming out in the next year, including some on Singularity Net, right? So, I mean, I think that monopoly is, is not there anymore. Now, Facebook has been declining for quite some time. I mean, I, I only use it to check, check on my high school friends, right? And Twitter, Elon Musk is doing his best to destroy it as rapidly as possible, right? So, I mean, you can see what. What used to look unassailable with these big tech companies, you're seeing they're all worrying and struggling now. So I think, I think that's a great opportunity for the decentralized ecosystem to, to really come, come into its own, right? Because AI is starting to disrupt everything in a very big way. And that gives opportunity to disrupt the companies that have, that have been sort of oligopolizing things until now. You know, just like in the 70s, 
it was IBM, it was Wang, Wang Computing, it was digital equipment, right? I mean, there were mainframe, Honeywell, there were mainframe companies. It looked like they would own the computer industry forever. And then within five years, like they're, they're all sort of emasculated by Microsoft and Apple, right? So I think, I think we may see something like that happen in, in, the next, in the next few years where, you know, Google and Facebook and so on, it's not that they're going to go away, but they could go the way that, say, IBM has now. Like, it's still a big company, but it's not ruling the world anymore. Well, oh, there's no doubt about AI. I think AI is coming. AI is going to dominate every industry. And everyone can... I've seen that for decades. Almost everyone can see that now. Whether blockchain can grab the opportunity and, and make sure the next phase of AI development is decentralized and democratized, I mean, that's, that's harder because it, in many ways centralized infrastructures are more efficient to operate. We just have more known science about how to do things on, on a centralized infrastructure. But, you know, the decentralized tech is getting better and better. I mean, I've been a big booster of Cardano, and that's really, there's a lot of dApps on Cardano now compared to a year ago when we, when we, when we last talked, and it's much, much faster. And what we're doing with Hypercycle, which is gonna be thousand times plus faster than Cardano, but we can connect it to Cardano using Hydra in a way we couldn't connect it to, say, Ethereum or, or, or Tron or something, because Cardano was architected so that a side chain can really interoperate very, very closely with it. So I think we're, we're seeing faster, cheaper, and higher quality blockchains rise to the fore, but I mean, ZK Rollup, it's not terrible, but it's a very, very complicated technology to get, to get working. I mean, I, mean, I don't, I don't, I, I don't want to say that it, it won't work. I mean, it, it, can, it can work eventually, but the, the Ethereum code base is one of the most tangled up messes on the face of the earth if you... If you look in, in the software there, I mean, partly because they embraced open source so enthusiastically. It's just been contributed to by all these random people hacking stuff. So I, mean, I think in Cardano, you can achieve scaling without the complexity of, Z, of ZK rollups. I mean, I think everything they promised for Ethereum 2 will happen eventually. I mean, they can do it. By the time they've done it, we may have something a thousand times faster with Hypercycle running on, 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 on Cardano, though. So yeah, I, I wouldn't say that's a dead end. There's brilliant people working on it. it, it, it it's, it's great, but I mean, it's I see Ethereum in the same position as Microsoft Windows or something. I mean, it's uh, you have backward compatibility to worry about, and that constrains you in in, in, in what you can do because you you have to have everything you do work with all this all this legacy stuff. And that, I mean, that's why Charles Hoskinson broke away from Ethereum and did Cardano in, 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 in the first place, right? He wanted to make something better that didn't have the, the burden of being backwards compatible. Yeah, so we'll see what's happening. We'll see, uh, yeah. With AI, it sounds like quite exciting future, and maybe in five years, we'll see a bunch of... Five years, we'll all be AIs. Yeah, you know, you know, you'll have to get a chip plugged into your head to accelerate your brain. Or, uh, yeah, exa well... Could be Neuralink, but there's a lot. There's a lot of other projects do, 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 doing that also. I, I mean, I think. Uh, I hope. I hope we don't see a future where there's like one company doing anything, right? I mean, you you really need a lot of different researchers and vendors, and you'd like everything to be open, especially when you're hacking your own brain, right? So. That's the sound of its eh, That's what makes it fun. Yeah. Thank you for exciting. All right.